Hello, Nick Leifker again, and welcome to Management 409, Operations Management. To conclude our chapter on project management, I just want to go over the steps involved with CPM with crashing. The thing to understand about this particular week, this particular set chapter, is that as you can see, there's a lot of steps, and it's important to get them right. After all, it's one of those cases where if one step goes wrong, what can happen is that the other steps are affected by that result and it throws the entire results off. So, be very careful. Now, step one. The first thing to do is to determine the number of days or weeks that a project can be crashed. So, it may be given to you. You know, you may be said, you may be told, this is the number of weeks that this particular task can crash, can be crashed. That may happen. On the other hand, if you're given the task length normally, you know, without crashing, and you're given the task length when fully crashed, then you're going to have to calculate it. You're going to have to find that out. So, in a case like that, the number of crash weeks is just the normal task length minus the crashed task length. So, once you have that, it's time for step two. Calculate the crash cost per week. Crash cost per week for each task is simply calculated by taking the total cost to crash a task divided by the number of weeks that that task can be crashed. The next few steps should be very familiar. Step three, draw the project flow map. That's very familiar. Step four, go forward through the project to calculate the earliest start and finish time for each task. And at this point, you should have your project completion time. Step five, go backward through the project to calculate latest finish and latest start for each task. Y'all know what these steps are. It's plain old PERT CPM. It's what we've been doing since the beginning of the chapter. So steps three, four, and five, you perform PERT CPM with the project. And you figure out things like, okay, what's the... Uh, early start and finish, what's the latest finish and start, what's the critical path, what's the slack, what's the project completion time. Stuff you've done before. That said, I think in this case you're going to want to use the electronic tools available because this isn't the, fir this isn't the last time you're going to do these steps when, you, when performing PERT CPM with crashing. So, after that, step six, you make a list of all the tasks or set of tasks that will crash all current critical paths. So, you make a list of all the tasks or the combination of tasks that will crash all current critical paths. You have to crash all of them. So, once you have that, step seven, you crash the task or the set of tasks that will crash all the current critical paths and continue to do so, continue to use that task or set of tasks until one of three things happen. First, the target project completion time is reached. Hey, you got it done. So you've you know, reached your deadline. That's, that's what you're looking for. Second, the task can't be crashed anymore. This happens. You know, we can only crash these tasks so much. And third, well, what another critical path is formed due to crashing. As the first example demonstrated, this is more common than you think. Now, something that can help you determine how long it is before another critical path will form, you look at the slack times for the non-critical paths. Reason why is because that's at least how far you can crash without a new critical path showing up. With step eight, well, you've crashed the project. Good job, that's what you're looking for. Well, now you gotta do it again. You repeat steps three through seven. In other words, you go through the PERT CPM process all over again, figure out the list of tasks that can be crashed and you know the combination of tasks that might need to be crashed. And you repeat that over and over again until such time as you reach your target completion time. As you can imagine, repeating these steps over and over can get somewhat tedious. So, how to make it simpler? Well, the computer makes it simpler. 
So you use Excel, you use Microsoft Project. These are extremely useful for situations such as this. And now, now you know why I developed that nice little Excel spreadsheet for you to use. Because in order to work problems like this, you really need the electronic tools. You really need the computer to help you out. So, in summary, well, we talked about project management. We talked about what projects are. You know, they're big things to get done. So we use project management to take care of these events that are outside of the normal processes of business. In other words, these huge things, these huge goals that need to be accomplished. Now, oftentimes, tasks need to be done in a certain order. Also, we need to break these tasks in a project down such that well, we can actually get them done. And to help us manage that, we use PERT CPM. PERT CPM is just a nice little tool used to calculate the critical path of a project and, by extension, the amount of time it should take to complete the project. And as we've seen, PERT CPM can also be adapted to other situations. It can be adapted to uncertainty, and it can also be used for crashing tasks in a project. Thank you. And good luck.